Morning guys, hope everyone's doing well. It is a wet December's day today and we are actually right in the middle of a power cut. It's a scheduled power cut. They plan to sort of turn the power off. I mean, we have overheads. This is the problem of basically living rural is you have lots of overhead power lines around here. Um, even though we're so close to the airport, it's like they've kind of built this state-of-the-art airport and then just basically left everything around it just, you know, in, in the sort of dark ages. But yeah, basically the notification that I got said we're going to be working on the um, the lines or whatever. We're trying to make things more reliable in the future. Um, so there's going to be a power outage from 10 o'clock in the morning till 2 in the afternoon. So yeah, let's get some batteries out. So first up, I want to get the internet going. The laptop's all right because it's running on batteries, so that's sort of fine. Um, and I'm going to use this to power my router, which is actually up in the loft up there. Now I have got lots of ways of powering things, but the problem is I don't at this point have a way of connecting my kind of shed and my power wall and power rack, all that sort of stuff to the house because it can get a little bit dodgy doing that. So you need sort of transfer switches and the proper proper method. So I'm gonna look into doing that at some point, but for now, um, the only way I've got to doing it is actually running individual power banks. So like. I can use this small one for the for the router, which will be fine. That, that should last for, for hours, just running a router. And then I can get my big power banks out for other things I need to do, you know, like running, you know, the kettle or running whatever I need to run, basically, or charging things up. Um, heating as well might be a problem because it is quite a cold day today, but the heating's been on all morning just to sort of heat the house up. So I don't think that'd be, that'd be an issue either. So let's power this thing up um, and you get a mains voltage when that green light's on there. It's actually a Euro, sort of some kind of Euro, or yeah, it's a Euro connector on there, I think. All right, all plugged in. Get that, and that's how that green light's on. And then this just basically shows that it's on, shows you your power level. So I can leave that there. That will just run the router. They're really handy, those power banks, because it's a low power one. So you can only really use it for sort of charging laptops and stuff like that. But it just means that if you have a few of those, you can just dot them around. And it saves you actually having to run like you know, a load of extension leads around from like an inverter or however you're sort of planning on doing it. But you could like run a lamp off of that, um, you know, like a low power LED lamp, um, you know, your computers, things like that. So the idea is if you have a couple of those around, then you can just, yeah, they're probably quite easy to make as well. If you've got a bunch of 18, 650 cells and just put them together on a very small, cheap, like 20 pound inverter or something like that, make sure it's sine wave. Um, you could just make a bunch of those just to power things when, you know, your power goes down and you don't actually have to go to the trouble of spending a lot of money on, um, you know, connecting your big batteries to the, um, to the house, but with transfer switches and all that can get really expensive because you've got to get a proper certified electrician to do it really. You know, don't have to, but it is a good idea. Right, so that's come online. <clears throat> Funny actually, it's picking up my shed Wi-Fi, which is um, completely running from, from batteries already. And that means I can get this video uploaded as well. Right, the laptop didn't last long editing videos on um, on battery power. It's down to 19%. So if you follow the channel, you've all seen this one. This is the first one that I've built. Um, and I haven't, it's just been left pretty much since the road trip from France and it's still on 97%. Um, obviously this little display doesn't really take much power. And then there's the inverter underneath. So I just plugged it into my desk um, and that's basically gonna charge the laptop. Um, and at the moment, because the laptop was quite low, the charging's happening at about 100 watts. So it's about 100 watts going out of the battery itself. And what it actually says is it can do that for, that's ticking down, but yeah, well at the moment it's saying six, six odd hours or something like that, so. But ultimately this laptop battery's gonna be charged quicker than that. I'm not really running anything else in it. Oh, I could turn the lamp on though. Yeah. Right, the video's done and uploaded. Um, you would have seen that by now. But I fancy a cup of tea and it's also getting pretty chilly in here. Um, so I think it's time to bring out the big bad boy. Right, hello workshop. It's completely off grid at the moment. Um, and I've got the thing up showing on the screen here, which is showing we've, we're taking 150 watts out at the moment. That sounds like a lot on idle. Is that right? 150 watts? So like basically some of this stuff is on at the moment. Um, I don't know, probably things charging, the lights, um, heater, don't think that's on at the moment, not for 150 watts. You're getting some nice clean energy going into my, um, my sound stuff as well, which is nice. Anyway, what I came in here for was this bad boy. But just thinking about that um, high load in the, um, in the workshop, 150 watts, 
it's the monitor, isn't it? That's what it is. The monitor's probably, like the computer monitor's probably drawing most of that power. I was thinking that's quite high, all that stuff left on in there, but it's definitely that monitor. Right, so if you haven't seen this before, go check out the other video um, where I basically built this power, big, great big power bank. Um, it's like nearly a three kilowatt hour battery in there, a 72 volt inverter, which I've been testing out. And yeah, so far, so good. But I'm gonna try and boil the kettle with it now. I think the kettle we've got is like most modern kettles, it's over two kilowatts. So yeah, we'll see exactly what happens. This thing's basically like an Android phone. It's actually something else I was testing, but um, it runs the VBMS app, which um, Vorsex has made. And yeah, I mean, it just basically just shows you all the, all the information there. So you can see battery level is at 83.5 volts and all the other information you can go into here and it shows you all the all the cell voltages. But I've covered all this before in, in, other, in other videos, but it just enables you to monitor what's happening in there on the BMS. Right, so moment of truth then. There you go, kettle's going. 35 amps going out of the power pack. This is the great thing about having a really high voltage power pack because the higher voltage means less current. So that's like what we're taking out there. We're taking like 2.7 kilowatts out of that inverter and it's only drawing 36 amps from that battery. And you can obviously hear all the fans and stuff kicking out on there. But this doesn't get warm. I mean, this air coming out there is cold. I mean, this will run the car. You've seen me charge the Twizy off of that, so it's no big deal, but there you go, kettle's boiling. I was just thinking, I might stick some wheels on the bottom of that. What do you reckon? Then I could um, then I could just like wheel it around as a wheel I want to use it. It's pretty noisy though. The fans come on pretty much on any load on that inverter, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Probably probably, probably not a great thing, but rather that than it overheat, I suppose. So to pull that kettle took one amp hour because that was on 36.4, whatever that is, the charged amp hour. So about one amp hour, which is just crazy, really. Kettle's on again. I was going to make a hot lunch, but Sarah brought this sandwich back. So there's no need to fire up the microwave. Right, it's now about half past four. The power's come back on. It actually came back on when they said two o'clock. But I've put all the other power banks away, but this one, this one up here, which is running the Oh, you can see now because the light's on. Um, this one here that's running the router is still going. I mean, just, I don't know how much power it's actually got left. Well, it's still got four bars left. So that would just carry on all night, probably. Mad. So guys, it's about a week later, even closer to Christmas. Happy Christmas, everyone. Um, I don't know if you can see my Christmas lights. They are somewhere around up there, but I think they're out of shot. Anyway, so as a proof of concept, yeah, it's it's brilliant. It works. You can survive like a power cut. I say survive because you know I mean you're not really surviving, are you? It's it's more of a as the planes go by. I mean in this day and age you really shouldn't be having power cuts, but it just shows you you can use all this stuff to actually kind of you know get by. Um, like these little power banks and stuff are really useful. It seems strange because most of this stuff nowadays is all really like low voltage so that you've got LED lights in your house that run off low voltage. So you're kind of stepping things up, you know, using inverters to then go back down, which defeats a lot of the points in a lot of this stuff. So I think as time goes on, we could start seeing kind of like low voltage circuits. I don't know if anyone's actually seen this in a house yet, like low voltage circuits for running things like LED lights and, and stuff like that. It'd be really quite interesting. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Just a proof of concept, showing you all this kind of inverter stuff. It's really fascinating me at the moment. And um, catch you in the next one.